Terry. Hi Heidi. Can everybody hear me okay? Bring them on camera. Now when I'm looking I can see everything on camera. Bring them on camera. I can see them on camera. Can you not see them? Hi, can you give me a thumbs up to see if you can see anything? Hi Elizabeth. Hi Jen. Hi Lisa. Hi Tracy. So you can see, can you Terry? You can see this card. Hi Monique. Thanks for joining me. Hi Christina. Hope the jet lag's okay. Hi Kathleen. Hi Lisa. Yep, you can see. That's great. I'll just give a few seconds for people to join. Hi Narupa. Thanks for joining. Hi Heather. I won't keep you long. I'll just wait a few seconds. Yes, can hear you good. Thanks very much Jenny. Jen. Won't keep you long. Hi Piggy Sue. I did start it a couple of minutes early. That's nerves for you. I couldn't help myself. See and hear. Thanks Christina. Hi Suzanne. Right, I think we'll get started because a few of you have been here a couple of seconds now. So we'll get started. Um, I'm actually going to create this card today. Uh, hopefully you can see it all in full glory. Uh, I'll tilt it slightly to the camera and try not to dip it into the shaving foam. I can hear you, you are at the right top of the screen though, you need more right. Hi Tracy. Hang on, let me just bring this down. I'm a few seconds behind you. Can you see it okay Elizabeth? The camera behind you. I can't put the camera behind me Terry because I've got no room so it can't go behind me. So can you see okay or not? You see, when I'm looking at the screen, I can see the card perfectly fine. Hi, Ginny. Hi, Lauren. Yeah, so I can see the card fine. Hi, Joy. Are you still there, Elizabeth? Can you see the card okay? Hi, Zoe. Bring them on camera. I've definitely got it on camera. I can see it. Loving these every night. I'm just practicing Ginny, so I won't be doing them every night. A bit more to the right. Okay. Is that better? Yes, that's fine. Thanks, Christina. I can see it fine, you see, so I don't know what the camera's doing because I can see everything fine. Great, thank you. Right, we'll get started. So we're actually going to create this card, and in the background I've done a marbling technique, which you all, you all, I'm trying to watch out in the water. <laughs> Hi Tony. Um, so we're going to do the marbling background which I know a lot of you know anyway, it's the shaving foam technique. So I thought I'd do that today. The idea of the Facebook Lives is just to give those that have bought my stamps a few ideas of how to use them and obviously to show the detail live because you can probably get a bit a better idea. Oh thanks Piggy Sue, that's better, thanks Elizabeth. Um, so we'll start with the shaving foam which I've added to a piece of card, just some um, normal shaving foam, any cheap shaving foam will be fine uh, and I've just added it to a piece of card for this demo purposes mainly because I've got no Tupperware containers, I hate to admit it but I've got none so I've added it to a piece of uh, brown card you haven't got a clue about shaving, oh well you, you will now Piggy Sue <laughs> so I've added the shaving foam to a piece of card and obviously I'm going to do just one print, but obviously you could add more ink over and over and do 20 prints in, in one sitting so that you get lots of backgrounds in one go. I'm actually using Distress Oxide. So I'm using Distress Oxide um, Broken China, and I wish my camera would catch up. I'm using Evergreen Bow. And we're using Fired Brick. If I'm, t if I'm talking too quickly, just everybody shout, because that's just my... When I come from the potteries, I talk really quickly. You can have some Tupperware from me. <laughs> Thanks, Terry. <laughs> I'll have to come to Holland just for some Tupperware. That's a great excuse. So, right, we'll begin with the broken china. Now, these are the Distress Oxides, so they need a little bit of a shake, because this is a pigment and dye fusion. So we'll give these a bit of a shake, and we'll shake the camera at the same time. So we'll add a few drops. 
to the shaving foam. Now, depending how many drops you add, obviously depends on the vibrancy of the colour. We'll add evergreen bow. You can add as many colours as you like. You can use any inks you like. You can use distre normal Distress Reinkers. You can use pens and take some of the ink out of that. Any ink that you've got, you can use food colourant. Any ink that you've got. Now, I'm using fired brick, but I don't want this to overpower. Um, hi, Debbie. Hi, Ali. I don't want the red to overpower the whole project, so I won't put as much of the red in the shaving foam. So we'll just leave that at that. Obviously, if you experiment with your colours, you'll, you'll then realise what you know what, the vibrancy of the colour which you're happy with. Use any tool. You can use a a, a skewer, a pair of scissors, anything. This is all I've got to hand. Hi, Eileen. Thanks for joining. <laughs> a bit nervous. Um, so you can use any tool that you want. I tend to find that if I use a fine tool, then I get a finer marbling. If I use a thicker tool, then I get a thicker marbling. So we just take your tool and rub it across the shaving foam so that hopefully on camera you can see that that's, that's quite it already looks marbled. You can do that as many times as you want to mix up the colours. Just use my baby wipe, just reach over from the camera. This is a bit messy, but obviously if you do several... Hi June, hi Fran, hi Miriam. If you do several backgrounds in one setting, then the mess is minimal. So a piece of white card, I'm using Centura Pearl 350 GSM. I tend to like to use a 350 GSM. You didn't miss much, Miriam, just me waffling, so nothing nothing major at all. Um, so this is a 350 GSM. You can use water card, but I tend to find the thicker the card, the better, because there is some moisture in this. Now, if you place this down lightly and you don't press it down... Hi, Tra Hi Nikki, thanks for watching. Uh, if you don't press this down too much, then you're going to get a really light marbling, which I got on my first card. So I experimented a bit. And if you press down a little bit harder, a little bit firmer into the shaving foam, you get a better print. So press down and you can see the shaving foams expanding out on the sides. That's fine. So hopefully we'll have a reasonable print there. So we'll remove that. And that looks like nothing on earth at the moment. Just let me move the shaving foam out of the way. Now that shaving foam, you can obviously use that over and over again. You don't just use it for one sitting. Hi Jacqueline. So you use that for several sittings. So you might make 50 backgrounds in one sitting. You then use, uh, I just use a ruler, the, the end of a ruler. Um, you don't need anything specific, no special tools. And then just swipe across your card like so and if you just give me a few minutes to get rid of the mess while you look at that I'm just getting rid of the mess I'm just off camera just cleaning up my mess so we'll just clean this up and then I'll give you a closer look just bear with me a second It smells gorgeous in here. That's the only thing that you can't get on camera. It does smell wonderful. So we'll just clean that away. Hopefully you can see that. And you get a lovely marbled effect. Let me see if I can bring that up to camera, which I'm absolutely useless at. But that gives you a lovely marbled effect. But if you imagine using that with your distressing... Thanks, Pat <laughs> Thanks Trish. Thanks, Debbie. So if you imagine doing that with your bright oranges, yellows and those kind of colours, you really do get a really vibrant effect. And the other advantage is, I see mermaids. <laughs> That's because you're all, when you're inspired, you can see different things, Jen. <laughs> Hi, Anne. Um, so obviously, the more vibrant colours you use, you get a really vibrant marbling uh, technique, but you don't need any special tools. Just use what inks you've got. Empty some of your pens. Any uh, Dip some pens into pipettes and drip them in so that's and the advantage is that you get a lovely smelling card we need to dry that because there's some moisture in the card 
so when you're stamping it does dry really quickly Eileen it just dries straight away I just give it a little dry because there is moisture that um, absorbs into the card so I do dry that especially when you, you, you're actually adding a stamped image so I do tend to like to dry it so we're just drying that a bit more I have done one I have prepared one before in case this is not dry enough but hopefully that's dry enough and the whole room smells of shaving foam now so then we're using um, my border stamp uh, and this time we're actually going to use just part of it shaving cream and reinkers <laughs> oh sorry sis did you miss you can watch it on catch up and paint but you can use inks or sprays as well yeah you can use absolutely anything Debbie it's an old technique but I, t I like to use it with the stamps because it just gives a different effect in the background and it's just something a little bit different um, and poster paints yes any of the, any of the kids poster paints um, so I'm using the part of the stamp this time not the whole stamp so I've already got this ready on a block and I'm using a piece of low tack tape um, as I said before, this is quite a long border stamp, so you don't have to use the whole thing in one go. Hi Helene! I think Ian is not that pleased with you using all the foam. Oh, he uses a shave, one of the shavers, electric shavers, Terry. He doesn't bother at all. <laughs> Hi Juliet! Um, so now I'm actually going to use part of the stamp. So I'm going to use a piece of low tack tape because I don't want the top half of my image. I just want the bottom half. Now because this might be still slightly wet, I'm hoping I get a, first, a good impression the first time, but not to worry if I don't, because normally what I do, I do several backgrounds in one sitting, and I might spend an hour just doing backgrounds, and then I allow them to dry naturally. Oh, thanks very much, Helena. Uh, so I, I allow them to dry naturally, and then do my stamping. So I'm giving the stamp a really good inking, mainly because it's a big stamp, and plus I am going on to a slightly damp surface so I'm not making excuses it is true I am going on to a slightly damp surface but when you're doing Facebook lives you just have to go with it oh I'm glad you like the stamp hi Belinda so we just take that up good nice inking now I'm going to stand up for this so I'm hoping I don't get in the way of the camera so we just stand up because I find I get a better impression if I stand up with the stamp so we're going to stamp this slightly off centre and as I say because you're using a bigger stamp give good firm even pressure now if you're using your stamp platform obviously that's not a problem because you can go over and over stamping every time I see sticks under the table <laughs> so you can, if you give it a good firm press now, if you're using your stamp platform, as I was saying, obviously this doesn't matter because you can over stamp. But because I'm doing a Facebook Live and my room is the size of a box, there really isn't the room. So I need a bigger room to be able to have everything out on display. But then with the camera on the phone, you can't see everything anyway. So I'm trying to get a good impression on a slightly damp surface. That should be okay now. Okay. There we go. So that gives us our first impression. Like so. Hopefully you can see that I guess you could use the stamp platform too. Yes, Miriam, you could use the stamp platform. In fact, I use that quite frequently with the bigger stamps. I use the platform the platform all the time the only reason I'm doing it like this is because obviously space and I don't want you to just see nothing at all on the screen so yes the stamp platform is absolutely ideal for that so then we stamp the image once again onto a piece of scrap card so we're bringing our scrap card and we'll stamp it again but this time we just want the flower Is everybody looking forward to the weekend? Got any plans? I'm hoping to get some gardening in. But the weather doesn't look very good, so I'm hoping 
the weather changes and I can get some gardening done. My other passion. So we're just doing a second impression. I won't have to cut this out because I've already prepared one. And then we're using uh, Distress Paint Barn Door. I just need to find a paintbrush. One advantage of working from home is that you can reach for everything. Right. It's named apparently since we left the UK. I already have weekend. Totally. Was... <laughs> the tree pruner is here today, Tracy. So we are finally underway. Yay, sis. Yes, I need a lot of trees pruning as well. So I know what that feels like. So I'm using distress paint. And this is barn door. And we're just going to paint the flower. Now, because these are translucent, the detail of the stamp isn't lost. I'll just bring this to the right a bit. I can hear Elizabeth saying to me. So because the, the paint is translucent, the, the detail of the stamp isn't lost. So you'd paint your stems of your flower, which I have done here. And then I've cut that out. I'm off to Ali Pali on Sunday for the Country Living Show. Oh, I didn't know there was a Country Living Show. Oh, thanks, Wendy. I didn't know about that. We have a long weekend today. It was Freedom Day. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Enjoy it, Belinda. Gardening and mowing and grandchildren here. Oh, you've got a busy weekend. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so I've cut that out um, and literally just painted it. And I've added a couple of layers of colour just to give it some dimension. I don't just add one layer of colour, but that's absolutely fine with the distress paints because they're translucent. So before we add that, we just need to add some stenciling to the background. It's quite nice having you all here because I'm in the house on my own. Everybody's gone out. They're all gone to parties or they're drinking or so it's quite nice having you all here. I feel, I feel like I'm not on my own. Hi, Ruth. Hi, Eva. Oh, thanks very much, Sharon. Hope you're well. So we're now going to do the monoprint we did the other day. So let's bring it to the right. So we're adding some. The colour is Candied Apple Distress Ink. Lovely, bright colour. And as we said before the other day, um, we're just adding the colour to part. Oh, you're very welcome, Christina. <laughs> it's lovely. You are just crafting with your buddies. Exactly, Eileen. That's what it feels like. It's wonderful. <laughs> so I've added the Distress Ink to the stencil and I've avoided the edges of the stencil. I don't want to touch the edges of the stencil. Uh, I went to Ali Pali when I was over there years and years ago when I came over this pond. Oh, it's wonderful. I'm out at the minute and then tomorrow for a mad night from work. Well, that's nothing new for you, Trish. You're always out raving. So you now spritz the stencil. Somebody's knocking on the door and I'm totally ignoring it. Why does somebody knock on the door when, when you're doing a Facebook Live? So I'm, I'm now going to place that stencil ink side down onto some of the white area. I don't want to cover all of the white area. I want to leave some of it visible. And then just make sure the stencil makes good contact with the card. And this just gives another layer of interest. So there's our first. And then there's still plenty of ink. Yes, a delivery. And guess what it is? It's craft. <laughs> just ignore it, Terry. <laughs> it's actually craft. Whoops, never mind. I got complimentary ticks and just had to have a short bus ride. Oh, I wish I had a short bus ride. I went to Ali Pali and had blisters the size of dinner plates because nobody told me that it was a long walk to Ali Pali and I wore heels. Not sensible. So I'm adding that extra ink to the bottom of the card. Now I don't want to cover up all the white space because I think some white space is, is really good on a card. <laughs> it was really sore, Eileen, I have to say. I, I, I really was like an old woman and I moaned all weekend. But so what we have here now, we have a mono print. And the idea is that I'm focusing here and I'm not trying to cover too much up here so that the, I'm getting some balance on the design. I don't like to I'll either put things in the middle or on the side, but I don't try to cover the whole area. I try to keep it 
so that you know the, there is some design element to it so when you're looking at it your eyes drawn to the focal image but the open space makes it a bit more eye-catching well it does for me anyway I know I need to wear flat shoes I didn't my husband said oh it's not very far to walk don't worry about it so I wore heels just so that I looked nice hi Christine and uh, no it I looked ridiculous I need I do need sketches so we're going to bend the petals like so and then we're going to add this the reason I'm using silicone is I don't like to use um, the foam pads because if you don't get it quite right in the right place then it gives you maneuverability so again not a difficult card but I do like adding lots of layers and, and, and you know and that's just what I enjoy doing so now we need some twine which I've just bear with me I've left on the floor I'm still here this is great because I can walk around my craft room and you're still here you haven't disappeared so we get some twine any twine is fine and then we're going to curl that twine into a circle so that we give the um, image a spotlight so that we're adding some spotlight to that image so we're adding the twine like so and to add that in place we'll just add a little bit of adhesive just behind I, in my on my actual card I've sewn this in place but you don't want to watch me sew because you'll all be falling asleep so we're just going to add that idea that's like so that just gives it a spotlight and if you look at my original card if I bring that up to camera you can see that I've actually stitched that one in I've actually hand stitched the detail in sorry I'm a few seconds behind you so I've, I've hand stitched here and here and that holds the twine in place but if you don't want to do any stitching the glue holds it in place sufficiently no problem at all um, so we'll add the other details oh and I've added some stitching to the stem but I won't add the stitching here on live because you could be here another three hours while I add these stitches along the stem you all know how to do a, a basic stitch but that just adds another element to the design and it makes it really tactile so I quite like that yes I like the stitching detail so it just gives it another I, I like my cards to be touchy-feely and if you've got a couple of friends like I have who've got, who are sight impaired then they like to feel things on the cards so that's ideal so we're now going to use my date stamp do you remember this stamp from the other day uh, I don't use it as people would in the bullet journals or for highlighting birthdays or anything like that I tend to add it for in a mixed media kind of way um, so that it's non-specific but obviously you could make it specific for people's birthdays so I've added three of the numbers to my acrylic block and we're using archival ink vermilion just ink that up and then we'll this time I think we'll add the stamping in a different place we'll add it here and we'll add some to the top again aiming not to cover all that white area I want to keep some of that white area free so hopefully I'm not leaning over too much so that you can't see so there's the numbers which stamp wonderfully and then we get a piece of scrap card these are the little details that I like adding and, and I, this is what interests me the most is adding the little details to the cards and just you know it sort of makes it more interesting for me but then again I like clean and simple as well but the, I think there's this just being creative is just fun it doesn't there's there's no rules so I just enjoy myself and really the idea behind these Facebook lives is you, you, you may know all the techniques you may know everything about the stamping but even if you just pick up one tip or there's a colour scheme that you like 
um, then I've done my job. You know, it's just, it's a bit of fun and it's, it's like having you here in the room with me. So we're going to add this. I've just picked the month of May. We'll cut that out. And I love these months because they're, they're slightly vintage, so they're slightly aged. So I quite like that. Again, a tiny detail, but it just adds something for me to the design. Uh, where's my job done? <laughs> oh, thanks, Piggy Sue. So we'll add that to there. And the red just picks up the red in the marbling in the background. But I didn't want the background to be too overpowering, but just those pops of red. And then the mess that I normally make with splatters, because I, I always splatter myself. So we get a touch of paint. Add a little bit of water to the paint. And then I need something to bang my paintbrush with. So we just add some splatters. To the background again another little detail but the stamp's so detailed you could actually pick out areas and die cut areas I'm actually going to try a few different techniques again this weekend but I've been doing more Facebook lives just to try and practice getting the angles and and sort of finding out from yourselves which is the best so I hope you've had a good view today and you can see everything fine so I'll bring in the original card I have got another card I've made to show you as well. So the original card shows the stitching, but obviously I haven't done the stitching on, on um, just save this video so I can have a go in the morning. Oh, brilliant. Thanks, Sally. You'll have to show me. Um, so I've added stitching to this one, but I've not added stitching to the one that I've made for you guys today because it's just too time consuming to add the stitching but if you add the stitching that really adds some texture and then before I go I've got another card I've made for you using this using the same border stamp so if I get the wrapper so you can see so as you can see the stamp is in two halves I will do a sample off to watch from the start <laughs> so I will do a sample with the stamp as a whole um, but I've actually done two samples splitting it in half because I'm trying to show you as many techniques as possible. So this is another sample I've made. Uh, and I try to use my vintage pieces in the designs. I have to keep myself busy, sis. <laughs> it's sold out. That's crafty. Really? Have you tried Artist Trading Post, Ali? I know that Sue's had some stock in, so Sue might have the stock. What's the name of the set, Tracy? The set is called, which I should know off by art... It's called Feathered Bloom. So if you if you want any stamps, then Artistic Stamper will have some if it's out of stock anywhere else. Uh, and that's Sue Tucker. If you look Sue up online, you can find it in Sue's online shop. Great delivery as well. She's very quick. Um, but this one, I've actually used the feathers on its own. Um, oh, thanks, Trish. It's hard to watch everybody's comments and create at the same time. Artist Trading Post had them earlier. Thanks very much, Miriam. Um, so with this one, I've done a Distress Oxide background and I've actually used a vintage um, dip pen to go with the feathers. Uh, oh, thanks, Ali. Um, so I've used a dip pen and again, I've used part of the image. So the idea is that I'm trying to show you that you can use bits of the image rather than the whole thing. So hopefully that gives you another idea as well. I'll actually blog, oh thanks for all the hearts, I'll actually blog these cards as well so that I can give all the details and all the products and everything. Fabulous demonstration, I shall save the video. Oh thanks very much Wendy. <laughs> so I'm just, that that's actually my Facebook live, I hope you enjoyed it um, and my plan is to um, try and do the Facebook lives in more of a routine way, sort of maybe once a week or twice a week uh, and try and do different techniques um, artist trading post has them so that's great um, and you'll have quick delivery seriously Sue gets them out so quickly um, but the idea is that I'll do the Facebook lives either once a week 
or twice a week and I'll try different techniques, old ones, I'll try and think up some new ones as well. Oh, that's crafty, got new stock yesterday. Thanks, Tony. Um, but yes, I'll try and um, keep it more on a more frequent basis rather than so, you know, everything all at once. But the reason I did the Facebook Lives is because it's a new release. I wanted to try and show you the stamps in a better way. Um, so hopefully I'll have another Facebook Live for you next week uh, and I'll try one of my different stamps. So thanks ever so much and thanks ever so much for the hearts. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and hopefully we'll get some sunshine. And thanks for popping by and I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.